Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at QNAT NAS, the behaviour within RAID, the software and pretty much everything to do with the day-to-day -day use of your QNAP network attached storage device. So what we're going to do today is we're first going to check the read and write speeds of an AS over 1 GBE in a RAID 5 environment and then we're going to simulate a drive failure and show you exactly the behaviour that you will see in the event of one of the drives in a RAID 5 environment on a QNAP NAS failing. So first and foremost, we need to do a control experiment. And to do that, we're going to map one of these shared folders here we've created in our previous video. The more keen will remember some of this stuff that we did here with creating user accounts. Um, to create a network drive, nice and simple, uh, use the QFinder Pro application, right click, go to map network drive, head over, select the shared folder on the device that you want to go for and utilize. So say we're gonna go for marketing why not and then map the network drive you need to log in uh, with the account you've created with the device admin or indeed any user that has access to that folder select the target letter that you want to go for so we're going to go for Q for QNAP we're going to click finish and that will open up our network drive so as you can see there's Q right there that's our Q folder now we, when it comes to transferring files to the NAS you've got two ways of doing it you can either drag folders and files directly into the user interface here, or just use the Windows file um, database like this, as you would with any other Windows drive, you know, pictures, documents, whatever, and drag files and folders into it. So if you don't believe me, what we'll do is we are looking at marketing here. We'll open up marketing there. And then from that network drive, you can see there, what I'm gonna do is open up a brand new drive. We'll use some of those test files we've been using on previous videos. And we're going to find those bad boys out. Let's go for the test files. Where are they? Perhaps you've seen them. There we are, 35 gig of test files. I'm going to click copy. And we're going to just paste them directly into that folder. And the speed we're looking at here, because obviously we're connected via one gigabit ethernet, so network speeds. Speeds will always be between 90 and 110 megabits per second. Uh, megabytes per second even and that's going to transfer over so you can see the speed there again It's going to fluctuate there depending on the folders and files you're using and again The files inside this folder is a combination of PDF word docs all that sort of stuff um, But as you can see that speed is going to be maintained there at that 100 odd megabytes per second And again, it's going to dip as low as 90 something and up to about 110 or thereabouts so We're not going to let that finish just take my word for it that those are going to be consistent speeds and again, if we refresh that page on the NAS, you can see those folders and files, just like on our network folder that we've got here on the network drive, boom. All the stuff inside there, the same folders and files. We're just gonna delete those real quick. Again, we're gonna refresh that folder. They're all gone. Presumably they're in the recycle bin for that anyway. There's our recycle folder there. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to see that these three drives in our TS351 on a RAID 5 environment, as you can see, it's RAID Group 1, it's three drives, 4 TB per drive in a RAID 5 environment. So that means you can sustain one drive of failure. And what we're going to do is we're now going to simulate a drive fail. So I'm going to pull one of the drives from this NAS live while the device is plugged in. The system should, in theory, give us access to the data, but at a reduced read and write speed. And that's because of the system having to kind of emulate the third drive using the parity data that's written across them. Do check out my video on what a RAID 5 is to, learn, to understand about parity. But for now, the device is still up and running. And when I pull this drive, don't be surprised if the QNAP NAS makes an annoying beep noise or alerts us to there being a problem. So I'm gonna take this drive out of the top. This is uh, the drive in bay number three. So a drive has now been removed. Let's see how the QNAP is going to react. Let's go back into file station, shall we? Look at some of these other folders and files. It's, uh, all these different folders and files we created before. Go into that recycle bin, those files are still there. And again, remember I've pulled a whole drive from this array. Let's have a look, so it's checking. Group status change to degraded mode. Yeah, degraded mode has now been initiated because it is acknowledged 
that one of oh. disk unplugged. There you go. It's noticed that one of the disk drives has been removed. It was smart enough to not just realize it was a missing drive uh, or an error there. It did notice that I'd removed the drive. So the degraded mode means that the system is now going to use the parity data written across the other two drives to emulate all of the storage. And this will, in theory, change the read and write speeds. So now what I'm going to do is do exactly what I did before with the network drive and copy data over to it. But this time, the NAS is in degraded mode. And now we're going to be able to see the read and write speeds that you would expect when the NAS is trying to emulate all of the data using parity data. So let's write that into there. And now we're going to write that same data into this. And straight away, pretty impressive, it's managing to maintain those speeds of read and write. And that's because this is a fresh write of data to the NAS. It's still good that we're seeing those speeds despite the fact we're in degraded RAID mode that we're writing all of this data to this device. It's still pretty impressive indeed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this data run and then we're gonna start pulling data from these drives. Um, also, during the course of the next read-write operation, you saw a spike there, um, uh, spike down even, I'm going to reintroduce the drive and then the RAID is gonna to have to be rebuilt. It isn't just going to see the drive and carry on business as usual. And when it does that, that's where we're going to see an interesting um, difference in the read and write speeds. But straight away, imagine that drive that I've just pulled had broken. Imagine the head was knackered. Imagine there was some problem that killed off that drive. It's good to know that the read write operation is still not impaired. And you've been able to suffer one hard drive of failure and your data still be accessible and read and write operations can resume. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward this video so you can see it's going to take four minutes. I'm not going to bore you and listen to my voice for four minutes. And we're going to move forward into what happens when we read this data from the NAS. Okay, so as you can see, the degraded volume is still there. I've um, still got the drive removed, the one that we've removed in to you know, institute this degraded RAID mode. And now I'm going to copy the data a uh, big chunk of data, I should say, from the QNAP NAS onto a local file just to see how the read operations from this NAS work out in the degraded mode. So there's our network drive. I'm going to right click there. I'm going to copy those files that are on the NAS. I'm going to copy them to a local folder. This is just on the desktop here, just to see those read and write speeds in the degraded RAID mode. And straight away, 100 megabytes. Excellent stuff. Um, again, still not quite as snappy as before. We're not seeing many of the high tens now. We've dipped into the uh, 90 megs a lot earlier than before. I should mention this isn't the full 35 gig of files. What I've done here is use just a portion of these files to be sent over just to emulate this point. There's a slight dip in the read speeds from the NAS, but there's still no denying that's still great that we can still access that data on the QNAP NAS. Okay, so we're gonna cancel that one. And now we're going to reintroduce that drive to the RAID environment. And again, in theory, this drive should not let us immediately access. It will treat the drive and reinitialize the disk. Let's have a look. It should introduce that drive. No doubt the voice on this NAS will let us know what's going to happen. Have a quick look here, go through some of these options. Go. Disk plug in. And it's alerted us that a new disk has been reintroduced. Go to the RAID group, and now it's rebuilding the RAID. So straight away, if we look at the performance, performance should definitely spike on the CPU during rebuild modes, just because there'll be some, there we go, some stuff going on there in the background during the rebuild. So the final test we're gonna do is what about the read and write speed during a rebuild? Blue. Initializing or rebuilding RAID. There you go, that's the QNAP letting us know what's going on. So again, we're going to click copy, and this time there should be a little bit of a difference there with regards to what's going on uh, during the RAID rebuild on those read and write speeds. So first we're going to check the read speeds. We're going to go onto the desktop again, go into the test edit, and copy those files to see what those read and write speeds are. Again, lovely speeds being maintained there. We did see an early dip at the beginning there, 
and we're definitely seeing the numbers living more in the 90s than in that 10. So there is definitely a little slight performance dip in the RAID rebuild, but again, astonishing speeds there for um, read and write within RAID rebuild and RAID degradation. Um, again, is gonna dip, you see that? Not great, we are gonna see lower speeds during a RAID rebuild, and if we look at the CPU, yeah, there we are, see that the read write speeds there are definitely lowered because the CPU is going absolutely bananas. We can even look, uh, if we go into the full resource monitor, at just exactly what's happening with the disks and how much work is being done on those disks. There. Remember all the time our read and writes are still taking place with the read and writes dipping quite low at some points, but that's obviously gonna be those bigger files and how they're being handled. If we look at the internal disk monitor here, we can look at the physical network usage of those up and downs and how things are going forward. Still good speeds, considering what I thought we'd be seeing at this point. Um, but what we're gonna do is conduct the final part of the test. We're now gonna do a right action to this rebuilding raid. Um, so again, we're gonna lose that. We're gonna move, make our way back into the footage folder, grab those test files again, copy, move that, delete these files from there. And now we're going to do a right action to the NAS during the RAID 5 rebuild. Let's have a look. And again, lovely speeds. But, and for those that are just thinking, well, we're just watching a guy read and write, how dull is this? And I agree with you, it's not the most scintillating video. But what I would say is this is still good to see that the read and write action of that failed drive isn't hampering performance of the read and write too bad during the rebuild. Look at it, it's doing pr a pretty good job, to be honest. And although those numbers are pretty consistently high for those write operations, uh, for a normal scenario, I think it's really impressive we're seeing some of these numbers. Even the ones when there's a dip during a RAID rebuild is still pretty good indeed and a testament, a testament to QNAP NAS. But that has been the performance of read and write during a RAID rebuild and a drive failure. We'll be doing a couple more uh, videos on the performance of storage within the QNAP NAS. But if you've got any questions or requests, do let me know in the comments. If you are interested in buying a NAS, of course go to the guys at span.com. They know what they're doing in the field of NAS. If you've got a question about NAS that needs answering, or indeed need to learn about NAS software and hardware, do visit nascompares.com. If you've got a question, send me a message via Twitter at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.